I will be collaging today on a 6 inch by 6 inch piece of canvas, actually on three of them. And I am utilizing the collage to create depth and interest in the finished product. There is meaning to this, so stick with me and I'll share that with you as we create. Let me first introduce my channel. Each month I pull a prompt out of my coffee cup and this month that prompt was collage. So for the next four weeks I am going to be doing a collage and posting a collage video. This is number two. If you want to catch previous video for the collage week one you can catch that in the playlist that you'll see at the end of um, my end screen. In addition to that, you will see the October prompts, which were index cards. So you will see all of those. So I talked through that while I was getting out these 6 inch by 6 inch canvas panels. And I want to move forward in prepping these canvas panels for the collage by putting some gesso on. And that gesso will just give me a little bit of tooth to glue the paper to. I don't know if you can hear my dog sneezing, but he's in the background sneezing like crazy, and I don't want to go back and at it, so you're going to listen to that, I'm sure. So this is the gesso that I have begun to put on. Once I get all three of these coated, I'm going to allow that to dry completely, and then I'm going to come back with some paper to collage on top and my purpose to build up depth after layer after layer after layer. I'm starting with one of my favorite collage pieces which is an old book that I picked up at a repurposing and recycling place in the community where I live. This book is from the 1800s and it is a book of useful information for machinists, engineers, it has receipts, tables, graphs for watchmakers, and all sorts of things. So it is a book full of information on how to run your business or how to do things, cabinet makers, painters, etc. There's just all kinds of information in this book. But the book is very, very old. The pages will fall apart if you touch them. As you can see, they have aged to this deep caramel color, and they are very, very brittle. So I went to get them on first, and I wanted to use the tables that were inside this book. So that is going to be our basic foundation on this particular piece. Now that I have that down, I want to add... Um, you know, a good coat of that glue and water mixture. I have a little gesso in, in my brush, and I'm okay with that because all I am trying to do is build up layers. Now, if you're interested in how to make your own gesso, your own Mod Podge, your own texture paste, then I'm linking that video up above and that is a video that I put out a couple of years ago called uh, Do-It-Yourself Supplies. It has all the ratios, glue and water ratio, glue, water, baby powder um, for the texture paste and for the gesso. I think, it's, I think I use Plaster of Paris to create that gesso. So If you have interest in that, I also did a cost analysis on it, what it cost to purchase and what it cost to make. So some useful information. If you want to take a look, please do so. So now I'm coming back with just some plain book pages and I am going to turn on a little bit of music and let, let us just kind of get through this introductory step on this. And I will begin talking to you when there is something of interest to tell you.
I went to pull out my file folder full of just mark making. And one day I sat down and I did, um, pulled out dictionary pages, book pages, tissue paper, uh, deli sheets, uh, this is deli paper. And I cre had made some of my own stamps. And I had made some of my own brushes. I made brushes out of horsehair. I will put that up above. I'm not sure that I did a video on the stamp making. If I did, I'll also link that here. But I just marked all these sheets with black. And I thought this is a perfect time to open up that file folder and begin to use some of those pages that I created several months ago. And I do want to do that again. I have had some of you that have asked for me to do a video on preparing, on how I prepare um, papers for collage. And full disclosure, I haven't done a lot of collage. This is this is really one of my first. One of I, I don't think I've probably done ten since I stepped into this mixed media world. I think that. We collage a lot without even realizing it when we're putting together book covers, when we're putting together pages for journals. But to actually sit down and have a thought process of, I'm going to collage, I've never really done that. So I don't really have a full thought process on putting the papers together other than I'm working in a color palette. And for this particular collage, I am thinking about my granddaughter that um, we played tic-tac-toe when she was here. We played tic-tac-toe just about every day. She just loved beating her grandmother at tic-tac-toe. And, of course, my five-year-old at the time, granddaughter, she's six now, but, but my five-year-old granddaughter was very happy to beat me in every game we played. So... It just brings smiles to my faces when I think about that. And I have three um, canvases here. And I started thinking about these three canvases as I started laying these pages down. And I kept thinking that X and that O and that line through the middle. And how did I come out on each of these? You know, I always seem to have maybe two X's and one O or two O's and one X or... You know, she was always the one that was able to get three in a three in a line and and pull that off. So that's that's my thought process <clears throat> as we start to go through this. And I want to build up that layer of depth, that that um, game after game after game, um, conversation after conversation after conversation, and and just talking through all of these strategies and games that we played. So <clears throat> I hope you will enjoy this, um, just, you know, to kind of let you know where I am and, and what my thought process was on this. some pretty decent layers built up here with 
<clears throat> the different types of paper, the mark making paper that I've done, and my canvas is pretty wet. So I am going to allow this to dry, and I will take a hair dryer to it and dry it off a bit. Then I went to come back in with just some black paint, and I went to put that on with a credit card and not really have any intention on where that paint goes, just kind of a quick um, movement of that credit card or the card that I'm using to push that paint on to kind of unintentionally, if you will, add some of that color. And once again, I'm going to allow everything to dry. And once dry, I'm coming back with a sandpaper. It is a fine sandpaper. It's not real coarse. But I want to just soften, if you will, the um, substrate and kind of level everything out. Get rid of some of that paint that I put on, scrape some of that off kind of uh, remove some of the lines that are there between the layer after layer of paper and just kind of make this even, if you will. So that is what my thought process is or what my purpose is as I pull that sandpaper out and go over each of these canvas pieces. And we'll just look at all that that I scraped over there. So let me move that off and so I don't get glue in it and add it back in unintentionally and we'll move on to our next step which I'm coming back with yet another color only this time I'm using a brown so my whole um, palette was browns and blacks and neutrals and the um, deli paper I really liked when I put that down I have some tea bags that I've laid out that I want to use as well so we are sticking with that color tone, and I'm adding some of that brown into the uh, Mars black. And I'll let that dry, or I'll speed it up just a little bit with my hair dryer. And then I want to come back with that same paper once again and just remove some of that brown that I just put down. So I'm getting... Um, some interest going here with the peek through of the pages that is coming through that color. And I don't know if this is what, you know, most people consider collage, but for me, this is, this is how it represents itself to me. So let's create layer after layer. Um, I'm thinking about, do I want to use, at this point, did I want to use some of that onion dye paper and I decided to discard that and not, and not put that in, but that's, that's just part of the thought process. And now I'm pulling out some of these mark making sheets. And I'm trying to establish some continuity. So I have this whitish paper with the gray and the black, and I want to utilize that. So I have something for each. So I'll tear that up and, and get a little bit of that on each one. And as you can see here, I'm just pulling, pulling out sheets that have some consistency. So I have the same for each. And these are very transparent sheets. Um, some of these are on rice paper, some of them are on tissue paper, so that when I lay them down, they're going to see a lot of that depth and a lot of that color bleed through here.
tea bags. These are gallon tea bags and I have been utilizing these all summer long and making tea on, uh, I think we go through one about every two or three days. So I have quite a few of them. I've pulled my gel plate out and now I am going to create my X's and my O's and I shall print those off on these tea bags. And there we go. So that will go over the top of this and then I will glue that down and trim that off and, and we're going to have something I think pretty, pretty decent to work with. So there was my O and now let's do a couple of X's and we have a full row of losing tic-tac-toe. And that one didn't turn out too well, but I have plenty of tea bags, so we will get what we need out of this. And I think I just let the paint dry. I wasn't ready. I didn't have my bag pulled apart like I'm doing now. <laughs> I pulled the bag apart after I had the paint down, so we'll see if I get one this time. But you know, for your purposes, make sure that you have that bag ready to put on there and don't let that paint dry. Uh, when you when you put your tea bag down. So we have one X and one O and we'll get one more X and we will have what we need to complete this. And see now I'm getting getting smart. I'm pulling that bag apart before I put my paint down. And there we go. So I'm going to clean my gel press off, put that away. I have what I need. I will glue these down on my panels. Now that I have that glued down, I'm going to give that just a little hit of heat from this hair dryer to dry that. No, I'm sorry, I don't have it glued down, but it, before I glue it down, I want to make sure that that paint is very dry, is what I meant to say, on this tea bag. So I'm just heating that up because what will happen if I put this down before that paint is dry, I'm going to pull that glue and water mixture through that and I will be smearing my O. So I want to make sure that's good and dry before I start putting it down. And now we'll lay a coat on top of the dried canvas and now put the O on. And as that tea bag becomes transparent. You can start to, it starts to reveal all of those lovely layers underneath. So I have all of them complete now. And I need to do something with the edge of this canvas. So I shall paint it black and just go around the outside edge, paint that black, and get a good shadowy, framey effect on this.
And now I'm just taking the baby wipe and where I may have gotten a little aggressive, I'm gonna go around the outside edge and clean that up a bit and just make sure that all of my white spaces are covered. There we go, and I'm very happy with how these layers are showing through that tea bag. So I shall set this aside, let that dry, and then I'm going to come back with my liquid pearls and just give it three little dots on each for that X, X, and O, letting that kind of represent the three in a row that it takes to win. And this is the completed piece. I hope you liked it. I know it was a long video, but I wanted to leave everything in so you could kind of see the entire process and my thought throughout the entire process. This is going to hang in my guest bathroom. So it will hang above my towel rack. I think it it's going to have a nice home there. So I thank you very much for being here. I hope you will join me on these coffee cup prompts. We have two more weeks of collage and then we will be doing the poll for December. So if you want to share your work, head over to my Facebook group, Two Old Crows Mix Media on Facebook, and I hope to see what you've created there. Once again, bye for now.